Welcome to this video course featuring exercises on using numbers and math in Python. In this short course, you'll have the opportunity to test yourself by solving a few basic mathematical problems with Python. This is a follow-up to another video course with a similar title that you should watch first. If you haven't, then please follow the link listed in the description below or click the link on the corresponding slide. You can download the slides and other resources, including sample code, by expanding the supporting material dropdown, which you'll find just below this video. Note that this is a part of the Python Basics learning path based on the book with the same title. If you arrived here by randomly browsing the entire Real Python video catalog, then consider starting from the beginning of Python Basics. You're free to use whatever tool or code editor that you find most convenient, but throughout this course, you'll write Python using built-in IDLE, which stands for Integrated Development and Learning Environment. It should already come installed with your Python distribution, but if you're having trouble finding it or are unsure how to use IDLE, then check out Setting Up Python, which is yet another course in the Python Basics series. If you wish to take an even deeper dive into IDLE, then you can watch Starting with Python Idle, or you can read the corresponding written tutorial. To get the most out of this course, please follow these few steps. First, get familiar with the exercise and make sure that you understand the instructions correctly. You don't want to overlook any detail, as this could lead to solving the wrong problem. Then, before throwing yourself into coding, grab a pen and paper to jot down your plan. Think about how you want to approach the task. It often helps to break down a bigger problem into several smaller subproblems. In algorithm design, this is known as the divide and conquer principle. Try to solve the exercise on your own first, by putting your plan into action using Python. Finally, check your solution by comparing it to the expected answer. Each exercise will be followed by a lesson where I'll walk you through the thought process involved, explaining the logic and related concepts. Note that in computer programming, there are often many alternative solutions that can lead to the same correct outcome. If your solution looks a bit different than mine, but still works as expected, that's perfectly fine. Don't worry if you get stuck, and remember that you learn more from failure than success. Feel free to reach out in the comments below if you have questions or feedback, or simply take a break and come back to an exercise later with fresh eyes. With that out of the way, I can only wish you good luck. The first exercise will test your ability to define integers in Python using their literal form. It would help to remember what integer literals are. If you have the Python Basics book lying around on your desk, then you can flip to chapter 5 for more details. You can also look this information up in the online Python glossary or a plethora of resources on the internet. Here are your instructions. You need to write a program that creates two variables, num1 and num2. Both num1 and num2 should be assigned the integer literal 25 million, one written with underscores and one without. Then print num1 and num2 on two separate lines. I'll let you think this through by yourself now before moving on to the next lesson where we'll solve this exercise together. I have idle already open in the default interactive mode, which you can tell by the prompt consisting of the three right angle brackets. This is the Python shell which you can use as a playground to quickly test out ideas by running short code snippets before saving them in a file. I'm going to dock this window on the left side of the screen so that I have some space on the right where I can open another window with an empty file ready for editing. I like to have a split screen with everything I need on a single workspace like this to avoid losing focus or switching between different programs. You'll also notice that I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts to make things a little quicker. While your shortcuts may be slightly different than mine, you can always find them in the menu at the top if you're interested in what they are. I'll paste the exercise instructions as a Python string into the code editor for quick reference. As you can see, I've already turned each sentence into a separate bullet point, which we're going to tackle one by one. Right off the bat, it says, write a program, which indicates that you should save your code as a Python script, which I'll do now and name the file 
Exercise 1. Idle assumes we are creating a file with Python source code, so it automatically appends the .py extension to the file name, unless told otherwise. You can see the path to your file in the title bar of the window. We're going to create two variables named num1 and num2. It's customary to define each variable on a separate line in Python for better readability, even though it's technically possible to squash them onto a single line, which can sometimes be justified. As a quick reminder, you can define a variable by specifying its name, such as num1, followed by the assignment operator, which is the equals sign in Python, and finally the value. According to the second bullet point, both variables are supposed to have the same integer value of 25 million, but they're written using two alternative literal forms. Let's use the integer literal with underscores for the first variable, and one without the underscores for the second variable. You can place underscores anywhere in your literals, as long as they don't appear in the front or at the end. In other words, there must be some digits on both sides of each underscore. And these underscores are completely optional because Python ignores them, but they can be helpful in visually grouping similar digits together like in this exercise. Arguably, the first literal value is easier to read than the second one. Now, the last point in this exercise is about printing both variables in order to reveal their current values. Printing boils down to calling the built-in print function with each variable as an argument. So print num1 and print num2. You can now save the file and run it in the interactive window on the left. On my computer, I can reload the module by hitting F5 on my keyboard. The two numbers that appear on the screen are the result of calling the print function twice with different arguments. Notice that despite using alternative literal forms that we assign to the variables, Python prints them the same way. You can verify this by explicitly calling print with num1 and num2 in the interactive Python shell on the left. You see, from Python's perspective, both variables contain exactly the same numerical value. Using underscores in integer literals only makes a difference to programmers like you who read the source code. All right, the next exercise will continue our exploration of numeric literals in Python. This exercise is somewhat similar to the previous one because it also involves numeric literals but focuses on floating point numbers instead of integers. Floats, if you recall, are numbers with a fractional part, which have a different representation in the computer's memory. So in this case, you're going to define this number using the so-called E notation, which is short for exponential notation, also known as scientific notation. If you don't remember what that is, think of handheld calculators, which use it to show numbers that wouldn't otherwise fit on their small displays. Okay. Take your time to tackle this exercise before proceeding to the solution in the next lesson. As before, I have Idle's interactive shell open on the left and a placeholder file for the exercise solution on the right. It already has the instructions defined as a multi-line Python string at the top. Once again, we're going to define a variable. So we start typing the name of the variable, which is num, followed by the assignment operator and the floating point literal. The value of that variable should be 175,000. But if I write it like this, Python would create an integer instead of a floating point number. To fix that, I can just append the decimal point and a zero. This is great. We've assigned the expected numeric value to the variable, but they're specifically asking us to use E notation in the floating point literal. With E notation, Python takes the number to the left of the E and multiplies it by 10 raised to the power of the number after the E. For example, 0 0.001 times 10 to the power of 3, or 1000, will move the decimal point three places to the right. Now, it's up to you how many significant digits you want to keep in front of the decimal point and what exponent to use. You could, for example, write 175 E3 to arrive at the same value. Another option would be to write something like 
and adjust the number of decimal places accordingly. That's e-notation in a nutshell. Let's assign this literal to our variable. And lastly, print the variable onto the screen. Remember to always verify if your program works as expected by saving it and running it through Python. Great, it seems that our program is correct, which concludes this exercise. This is the final exercise in this section. Your task is to find the smallest exponent n such that 2 times 10 raised to the power of n returns infinity. Let's see if we can find it. Infinity is a special value in the floating point data type, which is greater than any other number. You can explicitly define infinity in Python by calling the built-in float function with a special string value as an argument which says inf. There's also negative infinity, which you can obtain by placing a minus sign in front of the positive infinity, or by using the minus inf argument. Now, unlike integers in Python, floats do have a limit or maximum value. If you try to create a floating point number that exceeds that limit, then you'll get infinity instead. Here I'm using 2 times 10 to the power of 500, which gives me infinity. However, to find the smallest exponent that yields infinity, I can use the bisection algorithm by halving the exponent value at each step. So since 500 is too much, I can try 250, which is half of the initial exponent. In this case, we're getting a floating point number that is clearly not an infinity. Let's try something in the middle between 250 and 500. That would be 375. Okay, that's too much. We can try a smaller exponent by finding the middle point between the last two exponent values, which would be 250 plus 375 divided by 2. We can't use fractional exponents, so we'll round it to the nearest whole number, which is 312. This also gives us infinity, so we have to keep trying smaller exponents. The next one should be 281. Okay, that's too small. Let's move the other direction then. We're getting closer now since the smallest exponents that we're looking for must be somewhere between 297 and 312. Oh, we're getting really close now. Since we only have a few numbers left to try, why don't we check them by hand? 306, that's still too small. 307, also too small. 308, bingo. So the smallest exponent that gives us infinity is 308, that's the answer. However, there's a better way to find it. This alternative approach is slightly more advanced, so don't worry if you don't completely understand it. You can import the standard library module called sys, which provides access to system-specific parameters. The parameter that we're interested in is called float info, and it shows a number of low-level details about the floating point data type in Python, including max 10 xp, which is equal to 308 that we found manually. Note that this number isn't set in stone as it depends on your operating system, hardware architecture, Python release, and how the Python interpreter was compiled. So there is no single correct answer to this exercise as it may vary. Okay, that wraps up this section. Next up, you'll switch gears and get your hands dirty with number formatting.